All current and ancient sources say that Tsar Nicholas II voluntarily abdicated the throne. Of course, this is just a lie. The laws of the Russian Empire did not have articles such as the abdication of the reigning monarch. The lawyers argue that the document does not have legal force. The Manifesto of Nicholas II was never published by the Senate, as required by the law of the time, and its writing was carried out without the participation of the Tsar himself, as the bearer of supreme power. That is, the very fact of the emperor's abdication from the throne does not exist. All historical sources attest that at the beginning of 1916 a conspiracy of the liberal cadet opposition and revolutionary groups that had close ties with certain political and financial forces in the West, who sought to overthrow Emperor Nicholas II, had finally materialized. Subsequently, a headquarters was created headed by A.I. Guchkov who intended to replace the current monarchical ruler with a lesser constitutional one. The plotter's plan was to seize the imperial train during one of the sovereign's trips to headquarters. Having arrested the Tsar, he was supposed to immediately force him to abdicate in favor of Tsarevich Alexei during the regency of Grand Duke Mikhail Alexandrovich, and in case of refusal, to kill him. At the same time, a constitutional system would be introduced in the country. Guchkov was the author of this plan. The corresponding manifestos were prepared in advance. He was supposed to do all this at night, and in the morning all of Russia and the army would find out about the abdication. All of this was done on the fateful February to March days of the February 1917 revolution. However, Kerensky, who saw Russia after the coup as just a democratic republic, headed not by a regency council, but by a constituent assembly not a monarchy in any form, but a republic. And Kerensky made Guchkov's plan part of his plan, because he understood that by acting openly, he would not achieve success. Guchkov established contacts with the highest military command, chief of staff of the general headquarters, adjutant general M. V. Alexei, commander-in-chief of the armies of the Northern Front, adjutant general N. V. Risky, commander-in-chief of the armies of the Southwestern Front, Adjutant General A. A. Brusilov, Alexeyev's Deputy General of the V. I. Gurko. They were instrumental in the success of the coup. The question of resignation was a foregone conclusion. On February 22, 1917, General Alexeyev lured the Tsar to headquarters and isolated him from the capital, in which riots immediately began. The sovereign's order to send troops to suppress the disturbances was not carried out. The sovereign was captured by the conspirators and imprisoned. The so-called abdication manifesto is a false invention. It was compiled with flagrant violations of pre-revolutionary office work. It has corrections, erasures, printed with different typewriters, says P. Multatuli. You can see that the paper was ripped, that is. It was compiled from fragments of different texts. You can see that the letter D in the first half of the text is not printed and in the second, it is printed clearly and it can be seen that the inscription, G. Peskov, was printed on a different typewriter. Instead of the title leading to the manifesto, there is an inscription, for the chief of staff. It was the conspirator's chief of staff. It can be assumed that this is Kerensky, to whom Guchkov sent a telegram indicating that the sovereign agreed to abdicate. The sovereign's signature was drawn in pencil and outlined through the glass, Nicholas II always wrote the most important documents personally. Therefore, the incoherence of the false manifesto is accredited by another document. The main text is typed, but it contains handwritten additions. At the end of the document, Alex saves handwritten words, which are the beginning of a forged manifesto about the resignation. Therefore, Nicholas II never wrote or signed the abdication manifesto. He was captured by the conspirators on the train at Peskov station. There was no resignation. It was not the Tsar who abdicated the throne. It was Russia who abdicated the Tsar. History must be rewritten and facts must be revealed in order to do justice to this Tsar who is still haunted by lies even after his death.